Hi, this is Yannikar from the NIMate development team. In this tutorial I'll be showing you how to get started with the Blender and NIMate. So first of all I'll need to get the Blender add-on and some sample files from the NIMate.com website. So from the official plugin section I'll get the, first of all I'll get the Blender add-on. I'll just save it to my desktop for ease of use. Then I'll get the animate profile, which is uh, a profile for animate to directly interact with these example blend files. Save that. And finally, I'll be de demoing the motion capture blend file at a later point in this tutorial. So I'll save that too. Next thing we need to do is to actually install the plugin in Blender. So for that we need to go to the user preferences window and to the add-on section and then just click install add-on. Now I'll go to my desktop as that's where I saved it and it's the animation delicode animate.py and click install add-on. Now here it's directly selected. We just install it but if it's not then it can be found always in the animation category. So I'll activate the plugin, close the user preferences, and now we can see that we have a new panel here called Delicode Animate. I'll just hide the object tools for a while. All the settings are here, so all we need to define is the port that Blender will receive the data from Animate. And when we're ready to start receiving the data, we click Start. Now we can actually start the animate itself. And currently we have loaded the default settings. Uh, these can be always brought back from the profile new uh, choice. So what we want to do is to send OSC data. Uh, we're not interested in quantized data or exact data only the skeleton data currently and we want to make sure that uh, the OSC is being sent to localhost and that the port matches the one in the animate plugin in Blender. So now we'll just uh, apply changes as we uncheck these boxes and then now we're ready to start doing something. So the easiest way is to look at what we have here in Blender. Okay, the animate just noticed me and is drawing the ghost ghost image. But we have a, a cube object on object named cube. So now I can just go, for example, to uh, the right hand control, uh, right cube there, the object name, click apply changes, and now if I start moving here. I'll just go a little bit further so the skeleton can be tracked. Oh, and I must click the start button. And now I can start moving the cube with my hand. Now in the ghost image you see perhaps me moving my left hand, but the ghost image is mirrored, so actually now I'm moving my right hand. Now these settings of course work in the other way also. So now I can see that for example the left hand is called slash left hand. So I'll copy that and for example set the name of the camera object to slash left hand. I move the viewport around a bit. Start the plugin again. And now I can move the camera with my left hand and the cube with my right hand. If I want to record these motions I'll simply give some timeline so there's room to record something and then enable the automatic keyframe insertion and click play. Now the motions are automatically recorded for all objects that are moved by the Kinect.
the animate. I'll just click pause and I'll stop the plugin for a while. And now I can see that the motions are recorded. That's pretty much the very, very basics of how to use the animate plugin. Now let's get on to the actual motion capture. So for that I'll load the motion capture blend example. This blend has a pre-made uh, skeleton, or actually two skeletons and the, all the tracked points as MTs. It also has a, a stripped down version of the add-on script which is directly loaded without having to go to the user preferences and enabling the add-on. Now all the objects are parented to a Kinect, so that if your Kinect is tilted a little bit, you can just offset the tilt or correct the tilt by rotating the Kinect empty. Okay, so now we're set up in Blender. Now let's go back to the Animate, and so that we wouldn't have to set all these names manually, we can just preload the um, the configurations uh, or the profile that we loaded. So let's click on import and select the Delicode animate mocap and bunny configuration file. Click open. Now I could straight away save this to uh, a quick profile. Let's call this mocap and bunny. So now we can always find it from the load profile menu. I'll click apply changes and now I can directly start moving the skeleton like like this. So now let's record some motion. So again I'll enable the automatic keyframe insertion and give the timeline some more length in order to have room to record everything and then just click play. Now I can do the motion, let's do some waving and the kick at the same time. I don't know in which situation a character would do that, but okay now we have the motion and now we can uh, inspect the data that we captured. We can also let's pause the animate add-on. So by selecting any of the uh, track joint locations, we can inspect its data in the F curve editor and spot any major problems. Now the data seems pretty continuous in the hands and the head area and even in the feet. Uh, usually the feet aren't visible for example for the whole duration of the recording so there might be some jumps. Let's see left foot. Okay I think here we can see some problems so now we could go in and just simply edit these out. That one too and these ones, and perhaps that one too. Now if I was actually going to use this motion capture in anything I'd of course go through this with much more position and see all of the track points before starting to bake it into an action. But now I'm happy with the results of the raw motion capture. Now I can go to actually bake the animation into an armature action and for that I will want to duplicate the results armature. Now it will still stay at the same location because of the constraints. I uh, will also want to see the frame range I'm going to be working on something from frame 50 to 450 and I'm going to use the 
bake action operator. So I'll go from frame 50 to frame 450 and I'll disable the only selected choice because I want uh, each of the bones to be uh, baked and I want to clear the constraints so that they won't mess up the baked data anymore. And I want to bake the post data and with the frame step of 1 so that every bit of the motion capture is kept in the bake. Oops, let's just insert the data quickly one more time. And click OK. Now, depending on how fast your machine is and how much motion you have captured, this might take a while. But there we have a nice action. And this can be then for example, viewed in the dope sheet. Here we have the armature action, and now we can simply just export it as a BVH, for example. Yeah, that's probably a good name. Now I'll set the frame range to the same one that I recorded or captured, so from 50 to 450 and click Export VBH. And now we could just delete the copy of the result armature and we're good to go for another motion capture. And then just to make everything uh, with the normal workflow, we can now start a new blend file and import the motion. Mm. But as Blender's coordinate system is a bit different to the default coordinate system of the BBH format, I'll set the uh, forward axis as Y and the z-axis as up. We can import the BBH and there we go. The record motion is ready to be used. So that pretty much covers the basics of how to use the Delicode Enimate add-on in Blender. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and happy motion capturing!